thank you for doing this. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the series. Oh, thank you. Uh, day one, I was like, just blown away by it. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Me <this."> too. <laughs> that first script, the pilot, I was like, yep, this is an incredible show. <laughs> yeah, even just the the trailer. I was like, yeah. This is this is my type of show. I, I knew it coming in, so it's yeah. Uh, oh, I it's love that. I love that. It reached its audience. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> and it's great when it pays off because there's things that exactly. you see in it, and it's not what you were expecting or hoping. And this, you know, just hitting hitting all the right notes. Yeah. So, right. looking at your filmography, I mean, it's extensive. <laughs> I was really quite surprised. Uh, where did your you know, uh, passion or interest in acting begin? Was it someone, someone or something that inspired you to go down that path? Yeah, I, at two years old, told my mom I want to be on stage and TV. And I, you know, I think at first it was just, I'm the youngest of five girls. So I probably just wanted attention. Um, but I knew right away, like I would watch Shirley Temple and I'd watch Judy Garland and, but especially Shirley, like Shirley, I would curl my hair like her. I would do the songs. I would, you know, I always just had this want and need to entertain. Um, and I think it was also just my own escape. And I just, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it so much. And I remember, I think I was like, I think I was like six years old when I watched Moulin Rouge for the first time, which, you know, I was a bit young for Moulin Rouge, <laughs> but I believed it. I believed every part part of it, and it just destroyed me as a kid. Um, and I just the idea that I could cry so much over somebody I don't know, and it's not even Nicole Kidman is not even this person, but she has just conveyed this. I think just so early on, I just was like, I want to do that. You know, I want to make mm -hmm. people feel something. And so my mom was like, No, no. And then finally, when I turned six, she was like, All right. We'll give you a little shot, but if nothing happens, then I don't want to hear anything. And then here we are. <laughs> the youngest of five with curling your hair to be like Shirley Temple is uh, straight out of the Brady Bunch. You know? Yeah, literally, literally. <laughs> it, it, honestly, yeah, it's it's that's so funny. Yeah, that was us. <laughs> yeah, I know that episode very well. Um, <laughs> I, I'm I'm the middle of, of six, so I'm, I'm the oh. Peter Brady of the family. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I'm I'm one of five. My mom's one of nine. And my mom's aunt had oh. 12. So we're, oh, you know, we're the Catholic big family. <laughs> yeah. What part of the country are you from? Um, I was born in Arizona, but uh, I grew up in, in L.A. for the most part. Oh, okay. um, yeah, L.A. is pretty much home, but we've got family all over. We've got the New York family. We've got, you know, Georgia and Texas and Arizona is where I still think like my roots are really is like, you know, I've got aunts and uncles and cousins there. So I go at least once a year to see family. Oh, that's great. What, yeah. what was, uh, I mean, was a character like Misty ever on your radar? Is it, you know, when you were younger, did you ever expect <laughs> to go into like these darker places? Yeah. I, you know, my first movie ever that I remember doing was, um, was a Stephen King film called desperation. And I just, very quickly, you know, I had kind of that like innocent look to me that people loved in like horror films. And, you know, and then I, you know, I played a lot of the kind of evil character um, as a kid. And, um, and I've always really enjoyed it. I've liked playing somebody that's so different than I am and figuring out why they do what they do. And, um, you know, I think I'm, I'm a very emotional person. So it's fun to take all of my emotions and bundle it up into somebody else. And, you know, and that might not be as um, <laughs> happy or kind. <laughs> and, you know, and I'm putting it into somebody that can be more dangerous has always been something very intriguing for me. Um, and yeah, I think it was always though different. You know, I did like even Sweet Life of Zach and Cody as a kid, like I did Disney, but I was like, a manipulative little, you know, <laughs> brat. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, I've, I've played all sorts of different characters, but I think I've always found just the more difficult ones, the more dangerous ones to be the most exciting to play. Um, like I've always wanted to do kind of like a, you know, a Harley Quinn type of crazy. <laughs> yeah. I would love to do Harley and Joker had a baby and here she is. <laughs> <laughs> wow, good idea. That would be fun. <laughs> see, pay attention. Yeah. Um, so you say you like to, you know, kind of dig into these characters. Did you create a backstory for Misty? Do you have something in mind that yeah. Yeah. motivates you? 
Yeah, I think, well, with the pilot, I really didn't know much about her, you know, like I had kind of an idea, but really we didn't see much of her. And then I spent, you know, a year and a half in quarantine. <laughs> so I, all I had to do was have time on my hands of figuring out who this person is. And I think I just kind of daydreamed about certain things that, um, scenarios she could be in and different situations. And every time I read a script, I like to think about like, you know, gosh, like what was she doing before the plane? What was she, what was her childhood like? And I think I've kind of come up with, you know, with, with also, you know, talking to the writers of, she probably has parents that, you know, are very busy, like doctors, you know, who aren't around as much, but all she had growing up was medical books and books were kind of her only friends. And um, obviously she's got some things a bit off with her. <laughs> um, but I think being isolated and being bullied and going through the things that she went through as a kid all makes certain things that she does make a little bit more sense. Um, I'm not condoning it by any means, um, but for her, you know, it makes sense. And I think the the bullying that we saw, you know, of her being at 13 years old was just kind of a tiny little dash, a little blip in the world of Misty um, to kind of give the audience a little, here's what she goes through. But I like to think that that was a constant for her, you know. Yeah, with, without the plane crash, do you see this side of Misty that we're seeing now ever unleashed or do you think she'd repress it and I think she would have repressed it for as long as she could. I could see Misty ending up being like, still staying at that school and becoming like a PE teacher or like, you know, like <laughs> something where <laughs> she gets to be kind of like the Ben Scott of the, the group. Like, I just don't see her letting go of the yellow jackets. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that, I think that we wouldn't have seen this this world's in the crash and and in the wilderness has has allowed her to unlock parts of her that she's never been able to and probably would never have been able to um but once those parts have been unlocked it, you know you can't really close that door <laughs> so i think though she always has had a bit of of darkness to her and um yeah i don't i don't know what would have happened but i like to think that she would have tried to be in some type of control in her life yeah the nasty teacher who you know that yeah. makes every, the whole class be silent because of one kid's mistake or yes. you running laps to the point of exhaustion you know, totally, I, I know totally. some of those teachers with my daughter oh yeah oh yeah Hopefully yeah not really, i mean i think about just christina's version you know with the adult misty of like going in and talking to the um to some of her patients, you know, in the, in the pilot. And I'm like, I could totally have seen her, you know, as like a, a teacher one day, like going up to the students and, you know, being like, <laughs> being like, I can flunk you at any moment. You know that, right. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. She's, su she's such a tough character to like to figure out because sometimes you feel bad for her. She's an outcast. She's a square peg. And then sometimes she scares the shit out of you. Uh, yeah. She has this, you know, uh, who would you want for your, at your slumber party? And she pulls out Jack Kevorkian. And I'm like, it's it's <sighs> hilarious, but also, my like, God, that's a pretty dark yeah. person. You know, the other yeah. one's bringing it, bringing out, uh, well, I think she brought up an MTV uh, VJ or, or. Yeah. <laughs> but then it goes into this darker place. Right. Uh, does right. she scare yeah, you I mean, at all? You know, I feel like I, I, if I was Misty's friend, I would, you know, definitely say therapy is important. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, but I think that as somebody who plays her, I have to find the things that I like about her and I enjoy about her. And, you know, I, I try not to judge the characters that I play. I, maybe when I'm done with the whole show, I can really sit there and be like, Oh, that girl's gotta go, you know? Um, but while I'm playing her, I really, I have to like her, you know, like I do. And, and I, and there are so many things about Misty that I do enjoy and I do like, and I, I do like that she has no filter. I do like that, you know, when she feels like she can open up to somebody like she has with Crystal, like she can tell her those things and she thinks they're fun and, and, you know, and she gets really nervous about, you know, expressing things, but then if she's ever, here's a compliment, it goes so deep. It goes, you know what I mean? Like, like, I feel like she's only ever heard negativity. And so when she hears something positive, it's, 
she holds on to it. And I try to keep like an innocence almost about her in, in the way that I play her. Um, and yeah, I think I, like I said, like I, I enjoy getting to play her and there are definitely times that I'm like, Oh my God, Misty, what are you doing? But it's up to me to read that and go, okay, how can I ground this? How can I make this a genuine confession or a genuine moment of, you know, even just in season one, when she says to Natalie, you know, like, I've, I've got a secret boyfriend too, you know, like, like, you know, like I added all the little, like, sh you know, kind of things and like, just, just keeping it really like, like, I I'm just like you, you know, like this excitement mm -hmm. to it. Um, I think it makes, makes her more likable for me, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I love that. That's that's one of the things that makes her such a complex character is you're watching this kind of innocent child like obviously she hasn't had great friendships. She hasn't had the chance to to go out and express these things that, you know, kids learn about themselves and then she gets the opportunity to. And as we yeah. see in, in episode five, it takes a really dark turn. Um, does it? Then, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. Yeah. See, but she's opening up and they're having these secrets. And again, one's telling like, you know, little kid secrets. And then she's telling, you know, I've watched my parents have sex and it's like, just, you're seeing the distortion, but then, yeah. um, yeah. you know, the then no also filter. everything. The no filter to her is really like, as I read it, I'm always like, oh my gosh, like, you know, like I'm like, I'll get, you know, my heart going. I'm like, oh my gosh, girl, like, stop, like, stop, you know? Um, but getting to play that comfortability to get to share that with somebody, you know, and, and getting to play that is, is really fun. And it was so easy to work with Newha because she's become one of my closest friends. Like I adore her. Like literally I'm in New York right now for work. And she literally just spent the night at the hotel with me and <laughs> I just sent her off her way. But like, I, I adore her and I love her. And it was really easy to, to have those like you know, genuine, like girly, excited moments that um, felt very innocent in a way, even though she's saying things that are not innocent for her. It's almost like she really just doesn't know better. Like she just doesn't know those boundaries, you know? Sure. Yeah. Her bearings are off essentially. Yeah. Um, very. <laughs> yeah. So what was it like shooting that scene? You know, I don't, I won't get into all the details people will know yeah. when they see it, but uh, what was it like shooting that? Emotional. It was, it was, Knowing that it was Newha's last day, that was that was the hardest part. Um, and it was just emotional. It was such a lead up to it. I knew it was coming since before, like really when we first came back for season two, I knew I was getting a friend and then that friend was going away. <laughs> um, and so the the closeness though that I got to Newha made it so much more difficult. Um and heartbreaking and um yeah I mean thank god she came back she came back for like another month at the end of filming and hung out and stayed at different people's places and which was great because I feel like we kind of at least a little bit we're trying to throw off some audience members to be like no she's still around she's still here you know um in hopes that people are like you know oh no there's no way that Crystal's gonna go because I saw that new hall was there at the end you know <laughs> um but yeah, it's, it's really, nobody can get too close to Misty, you know, um, without being in some sort of danger. And, um, and there's just such a heartbreaking moment when, when Newha looks at me and says the whole, like, you know, like, you're not my best friend, like, you know, and, and just, of course the, the, the writers had to throw in that, like, you're not that good of an actress. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's what really shot me in the heart. <laughs> I'm just um, but, um, but yeah, it was, so real and my heart literally dropped every time that she would say that and um and just the look on her face and the disappointment and the hurt and I feel like it was just such a real moment and I know watching it because I got to see the scene I can't help but as an audience member just be like <laughs> like you know like I, I almost laugh which is just horrible because it, but it's so like crazy what happens and uh, it's so misty like that that would happen and it's so crystal that she would fall into literal shit um and like it's just the whole sequence is so like uh, unhinged um and so yeah filming it was <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was a lot how, how do you think this will affect misty going forward losing your bestie oh my god you know it's interesting because i was curious on how they were going to write it 
Um, and I appreciate that they've really let her have some like very grounding moments um, and, you know, not to spoil too much, but Misty's having her first real experience to um, almost like a PTSD and a, her almost like her first time enduring a panic attack and like just a real sense of like, I don't know if she's taking ownership over that she caused this to happen, but, but just the fact that she just lost a best friend, you know, um, is, is the hardest part I think for her to wrap her mind around is that, yeah, she, she just lost her, her best friend. Yeah. I've seen the next episode as well. And I, I know what you're talking about and it's yeah. like, the, the moment they need Misty to step up is when she, she breaks down. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I love, I love though, then when Lottie gets involved, you know, Lottie can kind of bring that back, you know, bring her back to where she needs to go and she's back to it. But yeah, there's, she, it's, it's really nice to have that moment of humanity with Misty and for her to be feeling what she's feeling and that overwhelming sensation and, um, and playing it was, it, it made me like Misty more, you know, cause I was like, okay, she, there is a human in there. <laughs> there is, there is a, a young, young girl who's, who's really hurting, you know. One of the great things about this series is the casting and then to have the younger version of Misty and the older version, of course, played by Christina Ricci. And, you know, you, they flip back and forth and you, you really, so especially with, with Misty's character, you believe those are the same people. Um, yeah. Have you worked, do you work with Christina to develop the character at all? And some of <laughs> you know, her- Yeah. It's such a, I feel like I, it's such a boring answer from me because like, you know, the short answer would be like, not really, you know, we both understand this character so well and we both understand where she's at when Christina plays her and where she's at when I'm playing her. And I think it's really nice because we have so much trust with each other, you know, and I was really nervous going into this being like, you know, I'm working, like literally I'm creating this character with Christina Ricci, like a what a dream and b how intimidating she's literally a legend so I'm like it's terrifying you know um but just to be trusted with by her and by the writers and that everybody has allowed me to you know have my interpretation of what Misty's like as a teen has been really really nice and I feel very lucky and um and you know like we've we've talked about the the basics you know kind of okay what diagnosis do you think she has okay, this is what I think. And like, you know, talking about like how, you know, uh, kind of the why she does what she does kind of situations. And, and then, yeah. And then we kind of just get to watch each other flourish and fly. And, and um, it's, yeah, it's really nice. It's really nice. And also it's just exciting for me to watch the show. I feel like I'm always just jaw dropped by how well connected we are. Cause I'm always like, like, you know, the, just the little things that we do with certain mannerisms that I'm like, oh gosh, like I did not expect it to be so cohesive. And it's really, it's really a, a very cool experience. Yeah, I, I love what, you know, the things that you said about, you know, the, the things you bring to the character. That's really exciting. And and to go back and watch it and, and realize that this wasn't all directed, but some of this is is just you bringing it, you know, because I, I'm, I'm not an actor. So yeah. <laughs> everything I do write some, but everything is on the paper. And yeah. when I see an actor breathe life into it, that's that's the best thing. So it's when you connect, and that's I, yeah. that's why I see you with this character, and then you, you know Christina and you, you have this kind of synergy. It's it's wonderful to watch. Thank you, and I think I think that's why I always like to use the words entrusting because, like you said, with writing, you're putting it on paper, but you're entrusting the actor to to bring it to life. And it really is like a trusting process because I feel like you have this vision of how things are going to go. And, and it's like giving somebody like a, a gift to let them kind of take it and make it their own, you know? And um, yeah, yeah. It's very, yeah, it's, it's really cool. I, I really like my job. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty fantastic. Yeah. And the results are, are amazing. Everyone seems to love it. Specifically your character. I mean, Misty is, <laughs> is just, I mean, you can, you can have a whole series about Misty. It could be a comedy, it could be a dark comedy, or it could just be dark, but yeah, uh, anyway, yeah. it'd be really interesting. Uh, <laughs> how, how far do you think Misty will go to be accepted? Oh, as far as, like, there's no boundaries, you know? Uh, 
which makes her so dangerous, you know, like the, the fact that there is no boundaries, there is no, there's also no, um, and I feel like I've realized it more with this season than last season is that she really doesn't take ownership for much. She doesn't t- take on the consequences of her own actions. You know, she, she really just pushes it kind of on everybody else. Um, and so when you have that kind of mentality, you're kind of willing to do anything, you know, like she's willing to strand them all there just to have some more attention and to have some more, you know, need to be needed. Um, and, you know, even with, uh, the beginning episodes with tripping Ben Scott, while he literally is limping and has no leg, she trips him just so that she can be the one to pick him back up, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I think that she's in a place where she's willing to manipulate and do anything to kind of matter to people. And especially now that Crystal's gone, we're going to see, I think, more of what Misty is capable of. Oh, great. Uh, you just want to tell her, <laughs> just talk it out. You know, really, you can you can express things through words. You don't have to. I uh, know, I know, but black that's, boxes you know, that's and... not our girl. Our girl's all action. <laughs> <laughs> so going to, I think it was episode two, uh, we had a, quite the feast. What was it like uh, devouring Jackie? That like actually being on set, but also, you know, for your character, it's like you, the way they, they shot it, well, they shot it and then they uh, cut in these kind of artistic, maybe I'm wrong, but it almost seemed like the Last Supper, um, yeah. Yeah. you know, like kind of some kind of biblical tones to it. What was it like shooting that? And, you know, just, can you describe some of it to me? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's so interesting watching it after, you know, you've been filming it for days and then you watch it and it, you know, it's, it's cut down so much. Um, so you really don't know what's going to be shown, what's not. But I think what I was thinking a lot of the time was Misty's just like, why have we not done this before? You know what I mean? Like, like we're hungry. That's food. Like, you know what I mean? And, um, and I think that she's kind of, she has to kind of follow in line with certain rules to, you know, not like be completely hated. And so she's waiting for that moment when Shauna takes that first bite or says, you know, that we can do it basically to really enjoy herself and dig in. And, you know, I fully, our, our director, Ben was like, just, you know, go for it, make some animal noises. And oh, I did. I, you know, I was snarling. I was, <laughs> you know, taking it. Me and me and uh, Newha were just right by each other and really just, you know, we were going for it. Um, and yeah, it was, it was gross. It was gross. <laughs> and, you know, I, of course, like for, for me, I'm a very, like I said, I'm a very like sensitive person, a very emotional person. And I, I try to have as much light fun as possible, especially in these very dark scenes, these very dark times. But I think that, um, I think that, uh, I got worried afterwards that we filmed it to make sure that Ella was okay, you know? Um, and I, I did call her, like a week ago about yeah about like a, two, a week or two ago just to check in I was like I know you know we're doing all the like you know the snacky and like you know the the uh what was it Jackie fruit and you know there's all these jokes and I was like I just though want to make sure that you're actually okay because this is somebody that she created and somebody that you know she cared about and so the but Ella was so great and she was like I've died enough to like, you know, I've died in worse ways, you know? And she was like, I'm, I'm having fun with it too. So I was like, okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure, but you know, there's, yeah, it's, um, once I got the A-OK, I, I felt a lot better, <laughs> but, um, you know, we're literally playing with like a fake corpse that looks so much like her. It's insane. And, and our, our team over at Yellow Jackets creating that, that fake Jackie are just so incredibly talented and, our props department's amazing and and everybody, everybody that put anything into making, especially episode two is just chef's kiss. Amazing. <laughs> Speaking of chef's kiss, was she delicious? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it was really, I threw up. Um, I, oh, threw up I threw up Ella Purnell, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah, I did. It, you know, it was, it was uh, rice paper and, um, and jackfruit. And I think it was when they started saying, we really want you to dig into the cavities of her leg that I was like, this is so filthy. And like, and just like the, the, um, 
the rice paper got really soggy after a while and so it became really stretchy so you're like looking down at this very realistic body and like really going in for it and none of us wanted to swallow the food so you're just keep shoving it in and keep shoving it in and I just remember like a piece of just like skin like flesh started like going down my throat and I just was like mm, no we're done <laughs> we're done so I've thrown up now two times on set that time and then uh during the this most recent episode the uh uh uh, uh staying alive staying alive um it was like a big storm thing coming along and I like breathed in some of the like fake snow and I breathed it in and I upchucked. <laughs> Probably not good. Yeah. Uh, no. What's it made out of? Is it just uh, chemicals? Corn no, oh, no, corn, no, oh, no, okay. no, no. It's cornstarch, okay. soap some days. And I think those are the main two that they use for the most part. Yeah. So, yeah. It's like going back to the 50s. That's the same stuff yeah. that they used back then. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It looks so, great. <laughs> yeah, it does. It, it's it's awesome. That's the thing. It's, yeah. it's such a massive world you live in. I was wondering how much of that is, is actually uh, on set. Is there a set at all or is it all done on a location or how is it? Yeah, it's um, this season. So first season was all on location. Um, and then this season was pretty much all on um, the stages the only times that I was not on the stages, it's like episode, I think like eight. And really that's, that's pretty much it. I can't really think there was, there was only like one other time that we went to Panther Paintball to like actually film, which is where we filmed last season. But for the most part, we were um, on the stages uh, and, you know, it has its benefits, but also there's something about actually being out in nature. That's also very nice, but I did enjoy having much warmer, uh, yeah, <laughs> much it's gotta be a tough. warmer experience. <laughs> Especially when it looks like you're having about five seasons of this seems to be the estimate. Yes. Yeah. God, you, need to, you need to live through it, I guess. It's important. Exactly. Exactly. I know I've never had job security quite like this, so <laughs> I get to actually literally live through it. So I'm, I'm pretty happy about that. So there's tons of theories out there. Do you like to, to, guess beyond what's given to you in the scripts or do you like to stay in the dark as much as possible no I want to know I want to know I'm such like I dig for it all I love it I um I feel like I'm my own citizen detective I like to figure <laughs> out what's happening um as soon as possible yeah I'm I'm annoying I like you know the second that I see Ashley or Bart or Jonathan or you know anybody that I'm like so what's going on next season how's it going you know like I <laughs> I'm just yeah yeah, I made a lot of guesses this last season with the finale. And then there are certain things that leading up to it, I was like, oh, I see they're bringing in certain props. Why is that happening? Oh, you know, and so I, um, yeah, yeah, it's going to get chaotic. <laughs> and some yeah. things I just, I could never have guessed that were going to happen. That's it's, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. You wonder, dropping. my gosh. They put out so much in season one. You're like, do they use up all their ammo? And then you, as you get into season deeper and deeper into season two, you're like, no, they've got plenty ahead. Which also There's reminds me, more to explore. Yeah, well, we're also going to have a world where they are back, rescued, which people don't seem to talk about much. But I'm curious about, you know, like what that's going to be like to off the uh, out of the forest and, and into the into real normal life after committing yeah. all these heinous acts. Yeah, so I really, I, I don't know fully what's going to happen, but I, I really hope that we get to have glimpses of like what, you know, them going back to school looks like, or, you know, yeah. or just trying to get back into, you know, we get a glimpse of what it looks like for Lottie um, with going into the, um, the psych ward and going into the, the, the mental hospital um, and kind of what her journey looks like a little bit. And I'm really hoping that we get to see more of of, of everybody else's and um, them trying to acclimate back into the world. And I would also love to know, like, you know, are there people who maybe survived coming back to the real world, but then, you know, don't necessarily make it to adulthood. I, I don't know, you know, so there's, there's, um there's just, there's a lot. Yeah. To, to explore that. I, I'm very, very intrigued about. I'm also intrigued. I, you know, like I have my own theory that I would love to happen. I don't know if it's ever going to happen, but I would love 
like, you know, for everybody thinks that Mari is going to be pit girl, you know, and I still don't know. I don't know anything, um, but everyone thinks that Mari is going to be pit girl, but I have this just want so badly for them to, you know, get to the rescue and everyone's getting ready to pack up or whatever. And Mari and Misty have kind of been at, you know, odd, odds ends for a long time. And I would love somehow where, you know, Misty does something where she just makes Mari have to stay out there <laughs> um, or, you know, something to where it just will be so shocking um, where somebody just gets left behind. Um, and, I mean, you uh, know your character. I yeah, know. exactly. Exactly. So I don't know if she'd get let off that easily to be pit girl. She might have to go through more <laughs> than that, but maybe just because I love Alexa and I just want there to be more her until the very end. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'd be curious what Misty's uh, situation, what her, how she's changed once she's back into the school environment because she's a new person <sighs> and it's going to yes, be, I, I mean, I'm hoping they'd explore. Love it. Yeah, I think she's going to love the attention. You know, I kind of played in that with the first episode back for this season of, you know, all these photographers are taking pictures of them and, mm -hmm. you know, I added a little bit of like a, a smile of enjoyment of like, this is... I like this, you know, um, which was, which was fun. Um, and I think that she would be the kind of person that is like, oh my God, like I cannot talk about it, but like also loving that people are asking her about it, you know? <laughs> so just a couple more questions. Yeah. Um, kind of fun ones, I hope. Um, yeah. <laughs> if you had a slumber party, what three yellow jackets as you, so you're inviting them to your house, what three yellow jackets would you have over? Oh my gosh. That's a great question. Um, oh my gosh, I love that. Okay, that has the yellow jackets. Um, I would invite over Akila. I would invite over Van, and I think and I think Taisa, because I just feel like we would all like laugh a lot, and we could all sit around and listen to like Van telling stories and. Um, we can't invite Van without Tice, so that would be rude. Um, and um, and I feel like, yeah, I feel like we would all just have a good time. <laughs> and would you have some Jackie for dinner, or what? Would yeah, you plans be? or just pizza? No, no, we would do we would do some pizza. We do some we do some pasta. We do a whole an Italian night. <laughs> So if we're doing an Italian night, though, then we also we also have to invite Natalie over as well. Yeah, you can make it four. That's fine. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. There's enough room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would just be too scared to have Lottie come over. I feel like Lottie would give me anxiety. I feel like I would find her somewhere in like my attic and I'd just be like, Lottie, no, please don't. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I feel like, yeah, I feel like I'd be worried to have her. I, I definitely would not have Misty over for, you know, for a first slumber party. Maybe not. Maybe just we'll just grab coffee. You know what I mean? Like boundaries with my friendship with her. <laughs> Just make sure she doesn't know about it. Yeah. She'll, yeah. she'll, she'll be outside your window with a flashlight. Yeah. I'd be like, oh my God, Misty, my girl, come on in. Call the police. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so final question, three words to describe Misty. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, three words. Passionate. Unhinged. <laughs> and dangerous. <laughs> like it. Thank you so much. Thank you. I Thank really you enjoy so the much. conversation and uh, yeah. I'm loving the series. So I, I can't Thank wait for so more. Yay. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And thanks for the very, very cool questions. I had a really good time. Oh, cool. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Bye.